In this video, we are going to study stationarity with augmented DK Fuller test in Python using Jupyter Notebook. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Okay, so let's go into the web browser where the Jupyter Notebook is located. So the first step within the video regarding the Jupyter Notebook is that we need to insert a new cell below and we do so by clicking the Insert Cell Below button. And the first step regarding the code is that we need to import the corresponding packages, therefore we comment this as Step 1, Packages. And we are going to import pandas as pd, we're importing pandas for data frames. Then we're going to import statsmodels.api as sm, we're importing that feature from stats models for data downloading. Then we're going to import statsmodels.tsa dot stat tools as st. We're importing that feature from stats models for augmented DK fuller test. And last we're going to import matplotlif dot pi plot as PLT, and we're importing that feature from matplotlib for the corresponding chart. To run this code lines or this cell, we can either click run or we can press shift enter on the keyboard. Then we continue with step number two, which is data. For data, we're going to create an object named mData or model data underscore obj or object, which is equal to, and here we'll be using sm feature from statsmodels.datasets dot get underscore r dataset and we open parentheses first parameter which is data name equals to within quotations air passengers comma package equals to within quotations datasets comma cache equals to true so what we're doing here is the following we're downloading air passengers data from our package datasets and with cache equals to true means that once we download the data it saves it locally so we don't need to go and download again every time we run the code notice that this will download data and documentation with an mdata underscore obj object therefore we create a new one named mdata with only the data therefore equals to mdata underscore obj and we're going to get its dot data attribute and we want to convert this into a pandas data frame. So we overwrite mdata equals to pd or pandas dot data frame. And within it we have data equals to mdata. And we're going to select its value column. And we're going to set its index with dot set underscore index. And within it the parameter pd or pandas dot date underscore range. And within it we have start equals to and within quotations 1949 comma end equals to within quotations 1961 comma freq or frequency equals to and within quotations m for monthly frequency and we want to print part of this data and we do so with print m data object dot head method open and close parentheses so to run this code lines or this cell now we're going to press shift enter on the keyboard and we can see part of the data the first five rows with the corresponding dates and their values, which are monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands. If you want to read the full documentation of this data, you can do so with print and we have mdata underscore obj object and we're going to get its dot to underscores doc to underscores attribute. And as it is a single code line, we press shift enter on the keyboard and we can see the documentation. So we have air passengers, our documentation, which is monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands from 1949 to 1960. So now we're going to continue with ranges delimiting. And we're going to create two ranges, a training range for model fitting and a testing range for model forecasting. So we begin with the training range, which is T data object equals to m data object and we're going to select from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 1958 so 1958-12-31 or 31st of december of 1958 and then we create the testing range f data object which is equal to m data object and in this case we're going to select from the beginning of 1959 so 1959-01-01 or january 1st of 1959 all the way to the end of the time series 
So what we can see here is that the training range is the first 10 years of data from 1949 to 1958, and the testing range is the last two years of data, 1959 and 1960. In this video, we'll only be working within the training range. So to run this code lines, we go ahead and press shift enter on the keyboard. And now we want to visualize the training range data within its corresponding chart. So we comment this as chart. And for this, we'll be using matplotlib. So we have plt.plot and within it we have tdata. Then we have plt.ylabel, vertical axis label as air passengers. Then plt.xlabel, that's the horizontal axis label, and that's going to be year. And last, we have its plt. Dot x label and last we have plt dot show open and close parentheses so to run this code lines we go ahead and press shift enter on the keyboard and we'll see the chart below so we're going to scroll down and we have air passengers on the vertical axis year on the horizontal one then the solid blue line with the training range data so now that we have the data ready we can continue with Step number three, which is first order stationarity. And this is just a title, so we press shift enter on the keyboard and we're going to study augmented DK Fuller test. And for this, we're going to create an object named ADF for augmented DK Fuller test, which is equal to ST feature from statsmodels. A D F U L L E R function and within it parameters x equals to t data or training range data regression equals to and within quotation c t so augmented dk fuller test regression is going to include a constant and a trend variable comma max lag equals to 12 so this is the training range data differences lag order we're including 12 because our data has a monthly frequency Notice that we need to check and test if constant, trend variable, and this training range data difference number of lags are needed within augmented DK Fuller test. Also notice that ranges delimiting and augmented DK Fuller test function parameters were only included as educational examples which can be modified according to your needs. And we want to print the results. So we do so with print, and first we have ADF, that's the test statistic, which is found at ADF object position zero with Python notation, that's the first position. And then we have ADF underscore P value. And that's the augmented DK Fuller test statistic associated approximated P value. And that is found at ADF object position one with Python notation, that's the second position. So to run this code lines or this cell, we're going to press shift enter on the keyboard and we can see the results being printed. So first we have the augmented DK Fuller test statistic and besides we have its associated approximated p-value. So regarding augmented DK Fuller test statistic associated approximated p-value, we have the individual null hypothesis that previous period training range data coefficient is equal to zero or that training range data has a unit root. If rejected, training range data is first order trend stationary or assumed with a constant mean around a deterministic trend when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. If not rejected, training range data is not first order trend stationary or assumed with a non constant mean around a deterministic trend when including 12 lags in augmented DK Fuller test. Okay. So with this, we're finished with the code file, so we can go ahead and save it. And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.